In this video, I'm demonstrating software from Ned Graphics for repeat pattern design. And this is a suite of plugins that work inside of Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. But in this video, I'm only demonstrating the Illustrator side and just a few of the tools. Ned Graphics is for professional pattern, textile, fashion designers. It's used by big companies like Macy's and Walmart and Kohl's. So this software is priced at a professional price point. And I say this because I'm using this suite on a free trial right now. Since I'm out there teaching Adobe Illustrator on YouTube at conferences, they reached out to me to give me a chance to play with it and share my thoughts about it with you. So I've been hearing about Ned Graphics from professional textile designers, and I've just been very curious to try it out. So if you're curious like me, and you want to see what the pros use, let's take a look at it. And if you're one of those in-house designers or freelancers who use Ned Graphics, please share a comment or reach out. I'd love to hear any insights you have. All right, so let's take a look at this. So here I've zoomed into just a single unit of the pattern. And to edit this, I would just go in to click the start button on the repeat panel, and then I can move and copy and edit and the pattern update. So it's a lot like working in pattern editing mode in Illustrator, but it definitely has some advantages over Illustrator's pattern editing mode. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this next demonstration um, on a pattern that's a little less dense than this one. So let's take a look at that. So we'll start with this one from the ground up so you can see exactly how the panel works. So you can begin here in this menu under repeat creation, choose a roller size or repeat size and click the create button. And by the way, there's a menu here that lets you choose your unit of measure, inches or centimeters, and this will create a rectangle for you. But if you wanna just cut to the chase, you can create your own rectangle. And in this case, I have it in the color that I want it, the background of my pattern to be, and then it is six by six inches. So that will be the size of my repeat unit. When you have this rectangle or square, then you can click the start button and now we're working in repeat. Now I currently have this set to 100% opacity so I can turn on the border right here so I can see that repeat boundary. And when I drag a motif in here, we'll see that it is repeating when I back out a little bit here and you can see all the copies. I'll turn down the opacity. So this is very familiar to anyone who works in pattern editing mode in Illustrator. A lot of these controls will be really familiar to you. The big difference is that here we are working out on the artboard. And so I'm working with an art brush here and it's not being expanded. So that is an advantage to working in this plugin. There's also a design bar with some very uh, fun one click transformations you can make so you can flip things or you can flip and copy them like that. And we're seeing the repeat update as I make those copies. I'll just drag out another copy there. And let's go through just the controls really quickly here. So we can choose to do a grid or straight repeat, which is what I have right now, or we can change this to a half drop or a brick repeat. And for those, we have an offset menu here so you can choose the amount of offset that you want. You also have buttons here so you can control the overlap from the top tile to the one below it or the left to the right, just like you have in pattern editing mode. I'm going to switch this back to a grid repeat. We also have a number of copies here so it you could change this to two by two. I think maybe if you were having processing issues with too many copies you might need to turn it down but I haven't had to do that yet. So I'm gonna leave it at three by three. So I have the paintbrush tool selected. I have the brush active and I'll just continue drawing. Now, when you draw with a brush, you need to click on that stroke in order to see the updating happen. That's just something that happens when you're drawing with a brush live. You can also use this refresh button to see what you've just drawn appear. Now this is different for other objects. So let's say I draw something like really simple, like this rectangle, let me just flip the fill in the stroke, like that. Those you're gonna see update automatically, but when you're using a brush, you're gonna need to click on the brush stroke to see that update. So here, let me move this one down a little bit. 
anytime I'm moving something or copying something uh, that's a brush, I'm still seeing it update automatically. So what I really like about this is that my brush strokes stay live. They don't get expanded like they do inside of pattern editing mode. Now you can work with a brush stroke in pattern editing mode without it expanding, but the minute that you save your pattern, you get booted out and the expanding happens. So these brushes will stay live and editable um, even after I stop working on this pattern and when I come back to work on it, all of this artwork will be live. So this gives you some more convenient ways of editing your live vector art. Now, before I hit the stop button, I forgot there's a couple more things I wanna mention. First of all, I forgot to lock the background, but let me show you what happens. If I don't lock this background rectangle here, uh, you'll see it moves and now it's overlapping some of the motifs. I'm gonna undo that and then check lock background. That's gonna prevent me from accidentally moving this background and potentially overlapping some of the surrounding art. The other thing that I wanted to show you is that everything here is happening on one layer. And so we still have to obey the usual Illustrator stacking order. So if I take this object here and I send it to back, I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcuts, Command, Shift, Left Bracket. It is now behind the background. But because I have Lock Background Check, I can select it. You see how I just did that? So I'll send this other twig to the back of the stacking order so you can see that again. And then I can select it because I have Lock Background Checked. Now, let me show you what happens when we stop working on this pattern. I'm just gonna click the Stop button and then I'll select this. We have a single unit of the pattern. And by the way, if I look at this in outline mode, it's all vector art, all live brush strokes. That's great. Go back to preview mode. And if I look in the upper left corner, this is a clip group. So this is good for final art and I'm ready to hand this off to somebody if I need to, but I can also use this checkbox down here to create a presentation. So right now it says width and height are six and six. That's the original size of the square, but I'll use this menu here to show more of the pattern area. And when I select it, you can see the boundary. This is just one unit of the repeat. And then everything out here is a pattern fill swatch. Let's switch again into outline mode. So we see the original art and then the preview out here is just a pattern fill swatch. We go back to preview mode, and we'll look in the swatches panel. We can see the repeat panel has created a pattern fill swatch for us. And this checkbox here under fill size, you can check and uncheck this, depending on what you need. I'm going to uncheck it because I wanna show you some of these other buttons really quickly. So here's my single unit. If I click the swatch button, and we see there's no pattern fill swatch right now because I guess I have this unchecked, but if I click on swatch, it adds that swatch. Also, I can select this and use this button here, release. Let me click on that. And I'm getting a message telling me that it's going to make a duplicate and it's gonna be non-repeat art. Are you sure you wanna do this? Yes. And what it's done is it's put and it looks like it's overlapping there. I had to move this aside, but this is the released copy. So it's no longer a clipping mask. It's actually just a group. There's the background and the unmasked artwork. So that's the release button and I'm just gonna delete this copy. But anytime you wanna edit this pattern, just select that clip group and click start. Here's another example. I'm gonna click start and work on this pattern and I'm just mostly intrigued by the things that I can do here uh, without the limitations of pattern editing mode. So I'm using the Shape Builder tool. The shortcut is Shift M, holding Option or Alt, and I can just cut away that shape. And then let's make a copy of it. And I'll use the Eraser tool, another tool that you can't use inside of pattern editing mode. That's Shift E. And now I can erase this selected art here. So these are some of the things I really like, that I can use these tools. I can also use isolation mode. I can work with art that I don't have to worry about getting expanded, um, working on a, 
a color background that isn't overlapping everything. So these are some of the things about the software I'm really enjoying. Now let's go back to my floral pattern and we'll look at the colorist panel. This is for creating colorways from the repeat art. So here's my original pattern created in the repeat panel, the clip group, and I can always click start to open this and begin working on the repeat. And I recommend saving a copy of this original repeat file as a backup and then work on a separate copy of this in colorist because so much more information is going to be saved to this file by the colorist panel. It's nice to have a fresh copy to go back to. And I realized this when I was first working in colorist, I had a motif with a clipping mask inside of it and clipping masks inside the repeat are unpredictable in colorist. They're fine in the repeat side, but not in colors. So it's best to avoid these. And also raster content, images in your artwork, those are not compatible with colorist. So clear those out before you start colorist. All right, so let's get started. And we can work back and forth between the two panels. So I'm going from the colorist panel to repeat, and I'll check the use fill size box so we can see more of the design. And then I'm going back to colorist and I'll click on the plus button and this adds my original colorway and it's put all of these chips below. And these are not in any particular order, but they're attached to the art. So when I change the color of a chip, it changes the art. It's very cool. So the first thing I'll do is take the background color chip and I'm just using the arrow button to move it to the first position to help me keep track of this color. And then I'll move this color over. This is uh, the background elements or the leaves in the background. So. Now I have it set up how I want it. And so to save this original, I need to click the plus button and this starts a new colorway. And by the way, these chips each have a sub chip, these little rectangles below them. And that's because I'm using global swatches. And so any of these colors could potentially have tints. Now let's go to the random tab. This is a fun place to start. And every time I click the random button, the colors are resorted and it's kind of like that shuffle button in recolor artwork. And when you find one that you like, go ahead and save it because there's no undo button or back button like there is in the newer version of recolor artwork. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work with this one. Now what's interesting here, I, I wanted to flip these two. So I'll go back to colorways and there's a flip button here so I can flip these two colors and they get flipped in the artwork. Let me flip this one and this one. Okay, so now let's say I wanna keep the background colors that I have here. So I'm going back to random and I'm gonna select I don't know if I can select both of these at the same time. Let's see, I'm gonna click on lock and then start hitting random, yes. So your locked colors stay in the same position and you're just randomizing everything else. Now I'm gonna to go to the swatches panel and add new swatches that I can use. And there are other panels in the suite with tools for creating color palettes and organizing them for teams. I won't be covering those in this video. Instead, I'm just gonna use some of my own saved swatches for this. Now to change a color, select the chip and then choose the swatch to replace it. And because I chose a non-global color to replace a global swatch, I get this warning. And if I click no, it adds the non-global color and you can see there's no sub chip for this one. And I'll change another one and then click no. So let's say I've got my colorway here. I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna go back to colorways and now I'm gonna click the plus sign again and we'll see that the preview changes to the colorway I just created. And then the new one is selected colorway two and so I can begin working on that. Now, if I want to randomize this time using my swatches, I'll go to well, well, first I'm gonna to go to the swatches panel and I'll just select the swatches that I wanna use. I'm holding the shift key and I've chosen at least as many, if not more swatches as there are chips in this design. Okay, and then I'll close the swatches panel and go back to random. And then here, just click set and check use swatches only and then click random. So here I'm just randomizing with that new set of colors. Now I'll go back to colorways and I'll click the plus sign to add another colorway and save that old one. And then I'll show you how you can merge two colors. So I have a lime green chip here that I want to switch with the peach. And because merging goes from 
the right to the left, I need to change the order of these. So I'll move the green chip to the left, clicking the arrow. And then now I'm going to merge the peach into the green. So select both chips and then click on merge. And so now we've reduced the color. That peach color is gone and everything that was peach in the design is now lime green. So that's how you would reduce color. And if you need to change the design or reassign colors to different motifs, we can still go back into repeat. So I've got this colorway selected. I'll choose repeat and click start. And then I can just take, you know, an element here, selecting a couple of paths and just reassign a, a different color to these like this. And then I'll click stop. I'll go back to colorist. And the change is here. But now if I want to change all of the colorways at once, I would need to make that change in the original. So you can see our original um, did not take that change and the other colorways are still um, where they were at. And only the colorway that I went into repeat and edited has been changed. All right, so that's, that's all I have to show you for today, but there are other panels, other tools here that I just, I couldn't cover in this video. Uh, in fact, even in this colorist panel, there are other tabs here that allow you to work on layouts and create presentation boards and get all of your colorways and color chips together. So far more than I can show you here. And actually I've just been showing you the things that I'm the most interested in as someone who uses and teaches Illustrator for pattern design. Um, but there's so much more to this and you can find out more on the Ned Graphics website. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those links in the description for this video, but I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. It's been fun for me to play with it. But as always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to find out when my next tutorial is available. My name is Laura Coyle. Thank you for watching.